But I will report this bill without amendment presently. <laughs> members, members, we now come to the private international law, choice of law and tort bill. And the question we just need someone here in the chair. Yep, no, I'm and the question is that part one stand part. This is debate on clauses three to four and schedule one. Mr Chair. I call Sarah Dowie. Well, thank you, Mr Chair, um, for the opportunity to speak on this private international law choice of law and tort bill, um, which was originally um, brought in the name of um, the Honourable David Bennett, um, who then decided to pass that um, on to me. And um, I, I often say that while I'm not emotionally attached to this um, bill, um, it has grown on me. I think it, again, we've heard um, previously in previous debate about small, technical, but um, very effective bills. And um, this is, in my opinion, um, no different. So, discussing um, part one with regards to the preliminary um, provisions, of course, um, clause, clauses 3, um, 3A, 3B and 4, um, 3B, of course, um, sets out the interpretation. Um, it, it, talks, um, it defines applicable law, um, claim and country. And so this relates um, to the substance of the bill in that um, this is about tort law. Of course, um, tort is a civil wrong. Um, tort is established um, over many, many years of common law and jurisprudence. Um, but relates to those civil wrongs um, such as defamation, um, negligence and of course personal injury. And um, I note from the special, uh, from the second reading speeches um, that I do have some questions to answer with regards to um, personal injury, so I will get to that in part two in the more substantive um, provisions of, of this bill. But um, so we've, we've dealt with um, a claim and the jurisprudence behind um, tort. But what this act does with respect to um, the interpretation clause 3B definition of country is that um, it, it, we start to talking about um, um, the jurisdiction of where um, a tort occurs and where a claim um, can be brought. So um, we're talking about um, a country in the sense of um, private international law and um, what this bill does in substance that relates back to that definition is that um, we, where um, a, a tort occurs um, or an injury occurs um, overseas, um, what is happening here is that the rule of double actionability is actually um, being disposed of. So if, if a tort occurs overseas, um, and before or at the moment, um, a, a plaintiff would need to um, apply to the New Zealand court, and they would only be heard if um, where that um, injury or, or tort occurred, that jurisdiction had similar rules and then the plaintiff could actually bring the tort in New Zealand. So um, the double actionability rule is being disposed of and in its place um, we'll be looking at the tort, um, the, the claim for the tort being brought in the country in which the tort occurred. Um, so it's, it's an important um, definition there under Clause 3B, um, and you can see that it relates um, very much to the substance um, of this bill. Um, the applicable law, of course, um, means the law to be used for determining issues relating to the tort, and again, that goes to the jurisdiction. Um, we need these, um, these, these clauses um, going towards the interpretation of tort law so that we understand exactly um, where the tort um, occurs, which um, jurisdiction applies and um, how that um, claim will be dealt with uh, moving forward. So um, the purpose um, of this Act, of course, as I've described, is um, under Clause 3 to establish the rules for choosing um, the law um, to be used for determining issues relating to tort. Um, and it's very important to do that. It has been confusing in the past um, when bringing 
tort laws across um, tort claims across jurisdictions, and so this um, little bill, while technical, will make um, a real difference um, with respect to tort law moving forward. And um, it's a pleasure to be the member in charge um, of this bill. I call Jonah Naylor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, it's